Today, we are going to learn how we can link our lists in Microsoft Lists. At Amy's Animal Shop, we have a sales list, and we are going to use a lookup column to pull information from a customer list as well as a product list. Hi, my name's Amy. Welcome to my channel. Let's nerd out. The first column that we are going to add will be the customer ID. So let's scroll down and select lookup. Here we will give it a name and I'm just going to call mine customer ID. Next, we have the lookup column type, which is accurate. And then here we have the source. So this is going to be the source list where we are pulling this information from. So in our case, it is the customer info list. And next we will define which column we want to look up. Now you might notice as a little sidebar that all of your column types might not be showing here. And that's because the lookup column type can only look up single lines of text, number or date and time column type. So all of the other column types, unfortunately, are not applicable. So in this case, I want to look up the ID, which is going to be the customer ID. And here we have some more options which are super cool. The first area, we can define additional columns from the source list. So I want to also look up the customer name associated with this customer ID. So let's go ahead and click title, which is the customer name column. And then scrolling on down, we also want to ensure that this column is required when adding items to the list. Now, if we go to add a new item or order to this list, then we can just fill in these fields here and we will see this customer ID column. And it's a drop down menu for all of the customers on that customer info list. So I'll just select customer ID number two, and you'll notice that that title column is not showing up there. However, when we create that item, we can see here that that title column is now populating. So we can see in the name here, it says customer ID colon title. So that means that this is a sub lookup column of this customer ID. And we can circle back to this customer ID number two by clicking on this hyperlink. And now we are in that customer info list referencing customer ID number two. So we can see all of the information here and see how this lookup column will link your list. And if we click on this customer info, then we are circling back now to that full list. And we can see here that we have those three customer IDs that were showing up when we were creating that item. All right, our sales list is coming along, but we need to add our products. So once again, we are going to add a lookup column. And this time I will give the name as product code and we will select a list as a source. This time we are going to be selecting our product names list. And the column is going to be that product code. Moving along from the more options, I also want to reference the product name from that product code. And then scrolling on down, we want to allow for multiple selections. And now if we go to edit this order ID, then we can now see the product code column is populating and we are able to select multiple items from the drop down menu. I'm just going to exit out of here and we can even see that the product name, that sub lookup column of the product code is also showing the product names divided by a comma. Now, what if this customer ID number two was deleted from the source list? Let's take a look at this customer ID column settings and expand these more options here. If we scroll on down, there is this deletions from source list affect this list. So if we want to prevent these items being deleted from that source list, then we will toggle this on and accept the source items cannot be deleted. Go ahead and save our changes. Here we are in that customer info list. And if we try to delete customer number two, then we're going to see two notifications here. This first one can be ignored because it was overridden by this couldn't delete items access denied. If we refresh our screen, then we are going to see that number two has populated up once again as it was not able to be deleted. 
However, it's important to note that we are still able to delete items from this list as long as they are not actively being used in that lookup column list. And number three has now successfully been deleted because number three was not actively being looked up or referenced from the sales list. That wraps up this video and I do hope that I've helped you discover your inner nerd today. We will see you in the next video.